to construct a frequency distribution from a data set. The data set lists the prices of 30 portable global positioning system GPS navigators. In constructing a frequency table, we have some guidelines to follow. First, decide on the number of classes or beans that you want to include. If nothing is given to you, we usually take a number between 5 and 20. Then find the class width, which is basically the range of the data divided by the number of classes. In the third step, find a class limit. You can use the minimum data entry as the lower limit of the first class to find the remaining lower classes add the class width to a lower limit of the preceding class, then find the upper limit of the first class. You can use a tally mark for each frequency and count the tally mark to find the total frequency F for each class. So the question says, hey, construct a frequency table with seven classes. This information is already given to us. To find the range of the data, the minimum value in our collection is 65. The maximum value is 340. So the range is 275. Let us find the class width. It is the range divided by the number of classes, which is 39.29. Please pay attention here. To find the class width, you always round up. So even though it's 39.29, you're going to round it up to 40. Let's create our table. For our table, the very first class starts at the minimum value, which is 65, and then stops at 104. Why 104? Because 65 plus class width 40 is 105. Since there is no intersection between two classes, the upper limit for your first class must be 104. So there is a distinction between the first class and the second class. The tally mark for the first class is six. Why? Because we are looking for all the data range between 65 to 104. Okay, I don't have any number like 66, 67, or anything like that. My minimum value is 65. I don't see any 70 in the data collection, but I have 80, 85, and I have a 90, another 90, and let me see, what else do I have here? I have 105, but 105 belongs to the second class, so it doesn't count in the first class data set. Let me see. Okay. We are eyeballing, take a look at the data as fast as we can. And we have 100 as well. So we found six data set in the first class. The second class, 105 to 144. So if you add 40 to 104, you get 144 as well. So that's how you end up with the upper bound for the second class. And if you count the data as we did before, you have nine data in your collection. Continue the process, the third class, starts at 145 and stops at 184. The frequency is six. You can continue this process. As the question says, we need to have seven classes. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven classes. If you add all of the frequencies together, the summation is equal to 30. So this symbol here, shows the sum. Sum of all frequencies is equal to 
30. Pay attention here, everyone. You had 30 data in your collection. This 30 must be exactly the same as the summation of all frequencies. Now, in constructing the data set, we found the minimum value, we found the maximum value, we found the class width, the range of the data, and we constructed the frequency table. We showed that the sum is denoted by sigma f, where sigma is the uppercase Greek letter sigma. In the next stop, we need to find the midpoint relative frequency and also cumulative frequency. The definition of midpoint is the midpoint of each class is the lower class limit plus upper class limit divided by two. The relative frequency is the class frequency divided by the sample size. And cumulative frequency is the summation of frequencies in previous class along with the class that you're finding the cumulative frequency for. So, for example, take a look at the first class. It starts at 65 and stops at 104. The midpoint is 65 plus 104 divided by 2, which is 84.5. The relative frequency is 6 divided by 30, which is 20%. And cumulative frequency of the first class is the same as the relative is the same as the frequency of that class. And continue this process. The second class is start at 105, stops at 144. The midpoint is 105 plus 144 divided by two. The relative frequency is nine divided by 30 or 30%. 30 now to find the cumulative frequency, you're going to add six and nine, which is 50. And for the third class, you follow the same steps. And here is the table that shows everything nicely. So this is a frequency distribution table. As you can see, on the very first column, you have all the classes or beans. On the second one, you have the frequency for each class. On the third column, you have the midpoint, which are again representative for data set. Here you have the relative frequency, 20%, 30%, 20%, 13%, 7%, 3%, 7%, and the summation is 100% or one. And finally, the cumulative frequency is 6, 15, 21, and so on. But pay attention to the last cumulative frequency. It is the same as the summation of all frequencies. You can easily visualize the data. Remember that the histogram cannot have any gap. So when you're graphing a histogram, you have to shift these bars half a unit to the left to the right so the first class starts at 65 stops at 104 but pay attention here i shifted the very first class half a unit to the left and half a unit to the right so this is your first class 65 to 104 is now shifted a little bit to the left, to the right. To the left, you get 64.4, and to the right, you get 104.5. Why we are doing that? Because we can't have any gap between these bars. For the second class, it is 105, 144. So I'm just shifting that a little bit to the left, to the right, so there is no gap between the data. And that's how you visualize your data set using a histogram.
when it comes to graphing qualitative data sets, one of the popular one is a pie chart. A pie chart is a circle that divided into sectors that represent different categories. The area of each sector is proportional to the frequency of each category. In this example, we have the data about earned degrees converted into 2011. On the left-hand side, you have the type of the data, which are categorical data in four categories, associate degree, bachelor, master, and doctorate. On the right-hand side, it shows the frequency. So to visualize the data using a pie chart, you need to construct a table with relative frequency. On the left-hand side, I have type of degree. The frequency for associate degree is 942. So the relative frequency, which is 942, divided by the total. How do I find the total? The total is going to be 942 plus 171.6 plus 731 plus 164. If you do the division, it is going to be 26.5%. So that's how you find the relative frequency for the first category. For bachelors, the frequency is 1,716. So you do the exact same thing. 1,716 divided by 942 plus 1716 plus 731 plus 164, which is 48.3%. To continue this process, everybody, for each category, you need to find the relative frequency. You can also find the angle for each category, which one is easier for you. Then based off of that, you form the sectors. So take a look between all of these percentages. The maximum value is for bachelors, which is 48.3%. So that's why you see the bachelor here with the largest sector in the pie chart. Then you have associate degree, which is 26.5%. Then you have the master's degree and the doctorate, which is 4.6%.